Hello, this is Sart or Brian Rowe doing the January financial review for Mythic MTG Tech. I'm sorry that I missed the December one. Life was crazy, but I'm back rolling on videos right now. This is going to be my fifth video in five days. We'll see how long we can keep this streak going. Lots of stuff has happened in magic finance world in the last month and a half. And the biggest thing is a bunch of bannings and ether revolt so let's jump in and look at ether revolt fatal push is out right now it's a card that is going to have an impact on modern may see some edge play in legacy and i've even seen people argue that it's going to be solid in vintage although i really like dismember better in vintage this card is amazing this card is nuts this card is uncommon pre-selling at five dollars and a thirty dollar foil avoid it you're going to be able to crack some from packs trade for them at a reasonable price hopefully this is a promo card if wizards want people to show up to friday night magic make this a promo card that would be awesome uncommon people would be super happy to get it but 30 bucks for an uncommon on release date or five dollars that's a little bit silly the combo cat is out did a whole video on copycat and i'm avoiding these cards right now they already spiked and they are way too high in the environment i believe we could even see a banning if we don't see a banning if it's not too powerful they're still going to drop in price cool cards long term but this planeswalker should be about 10 12 dollars not 25 and super happy to see the red blue land spike up so high it's one of those cards that i pointed out a long time ago was awesome and now it is seeing a lot of play artifacts all over the place are just going up people love the masterpieces people love playing with artifacts the transmuter is 20 dollars and sold out across the board places lycos and matt who knows how the hell to pronounce that we'll make everything artifacts very very cool card 30 bucks out of stock a lot of places this is a card that i would actually hold on to at least for another month or two i think it could see a reprint though in the next modern master so how long you hold on to it is really a waiting game paradoxical outcome has hit vintage and hit it really hard it's such an awesome card it really does a lot for the storm decks it means that cards like null rod are continuing to go up cards like stony silence are continuing to go up cards that shut down these artifact decks this is such an amazing card if you don't already have your foils i would definitely pick them up i don't think this card is actually going to be banned because we've got thalia's we've got stony silence we've got no rods lots of things that could influence these decks but it is so interesting to see that wizards put an awesome card into a set that really has affected the vintage metagame overall the vintage super series is going on currently wizards is covering that and or super league so i don't know they keep the acronym keeps changing around but if you follow vintage definitely check this card out and see how it has hit the meta and pick up your foils if you haven't already commander continues to be a solid driver of investment cards going up bloom tender 20 bucks right now because of all these awesome commanders that are for color a two caster that can produce four mana is just great now is a wonderful time to continue to buy sell and trade for commander cards commander cards are starting to go up there are some wonderful cards out there i like fury confluence a lot the options here are just really really nice you've got like 10 different uh, modes there even at seven dollars i would still hold on to this card i don't think it's going to see a reprint until our next conspiracy and we don't even know if there's going to be a conspiracy three i hope there's a conspiracy trilogy i enjoy drafting that set a lot it's a little more on the casual side but it's another way to get reprints of awesome commander cards modern 
Modern just got shook up really, 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 really heavily with the current bannings. Collected Company, I believe, is going to be back to a $25 card here soon. Those decks got significantly better. Smuggler's Copter may have a place in Modern. I don't know. Wait till it bottoms out. Golgari Thug has shot up in price, which actually kind of surprises me because those decks were already playing for Golgari Thugs. It's not like they were replacing their Grave Trolls with Thugs. But look for Grave Troll replacements in decks and see what can be done to shore up those Dredge decks. Popper. We have so many good cards in the new set for Popper. Pick these up in foil. Pick up your play sets in foil now. There's interesting things going on there. My absolute favorite of any of these is the Universal Solvent. Remember, Trinket Mage was originally printed at Common. Crazy awesome card. I mean, I play that as a four of in Vintage, but I'm a home brewer. It is a destroy target permanent card that is so valuable in Popper. Blue is one of the absolute most powerful decks in Popper, even after they keep banning stuff. Look at the current set and find those Popper gems and pick up the foil versions before they shoot through the roof. We see another Phyrexian mana card shoot through the roof. Surgical Extraction, even though it's been reprinted, is at $20. And I'm not recommending liquidating it, because it's awesome. Apparently, when you don't have to spend mana on cards, you can just spend a little bit of life, they go in lots of different decks. When they have no real color identity, yeah, I know, technically it's a black card, but I've seen it in blue decks and green decks and white decks and red decks and artifact decks. Look at all of the Phyrexian mana cards. Look for foils of all of these. Oh, <laughs> Mutagenic Growth and Noxus Revival can be tough to find in foils. These cards are long-term, super powerful, EDH, modern, competitive cards. Every single format is going to want these. Make sure that you have your foil sets and even some extra non-foils. These cards are so good, they should be on your buy list. Next, I'm recommending people buy foil commander cards, specifically commanders. They're at a pretty low point currently, especially from the brand new sets and all of those foils from the 2016 cards. Now is a time to pick those up. Three, six months from now, in between commander sets, they're going to be at least 10 or 20 percent maybe even 50 to 100 percent higher commander is still an undercapitalized market wizards prints one set and has a few cards in some of their other sets to feed what is a giant casual market ulamog has spiked why because emmer cools out would i liquidate ulamog no if the marvel decks or other ramp decks do really well it could continue to go up and long term even after it rotates out i don't see it below about 12 dollars. it will bounce back to a 25 30 dollar range this is an awesome card i told people to pick it up at that eight to ten dollar range it's now doubled i'm still saying hold on to it i wouldn't speculate heavily in it currently because of the recent spike but i'm not recommending that people liquidate it either Oh, Unmask, giant jump and then started to fall back down. Who knows why? I mean, I, I really like this card. It's a super cool card, but it's not seeing a lot of play, not even in Vintage. Some spikes I just don't get. MTG Stocks, awesome repository of data, giant amounts of data. Oh, I could do a 20-minute video just on the list of 250 risers and fallers and what it tells you about the market trend. Check out this post. They are awesome. There's a lot of hidden information in there. One of the big things to look at is not the percentage gain, but the actual dollar gain, which I would have liked to have seen another column there that showed the dollar increase and which were the biggest dollar gainers, because that would be easy for them to do the math on. Huge amounts of information here, and I'm only going to cover five of them and whether I would sell them or not. Number one, Allurin. 
it's shot up justifiably so awesome reserve list card it has opened up a whole new group of decks because of recruiter of the guard in legacy and it's just a super cool card for eternal formats i would definitely hold it at this point not liquidate it recruiter of the guard has done so much for this card time sieve oh sell this card it is shot from $2.50 up to $12. This is the type of card that can easily see a reprint and isn't played in any competitive decks. Clearly, it's an awesome casual and commander card or maybe even a hardcore competitive commander card depending on your deck, but it doesn't see that competitive play, so this is the type of card that could easily crash. Worship. I was shocked that it was a $2 card. Why was this ever a $2 card? This is Ollie from Cairo on an enchantment. Super cool card for EDH. Seeing some play in modern. It is a little bit high right now. I could understand if you wanted to liquidate it, even with a reprint, it will probably only drop around to five or six dollars, but I don't see it getting reprinted anytime soon. It has lots and lots and lots and lots of printings. Hold on to it. I can see this being a $15 or $20 card. Urza's Mitter, $3 to $30. Have you read this card? This card is so bad. This is a classic buyout where a 800% increase in price is in no way, shape, or form justified. There's a limited number of these out there because it was antiquities, but this card has never ever been good. I would not touch this with a 10-foot pole. Uh, ancestral visions one mana draw three my favorite thing to do i play this in shardless bug it was underpriced at eight dollars and it's overpriced at 50. avoid it it's reprint bait i would bet a hundred bucks that this card is going to see a reprint within the next year and is going to drop down significantly keep your playset though you don't want to not have this card if it doesn't get reprinted but any extras that you have, 500% increase and $50 is just crazy. Frontier. Apparently there's a new format. Frontier. What is Frontier? I don't even know. Okay, technically I know what Frontier is. I see very little value in the format, but I'm going to take 30 days, build a deck, and give it a try. Because I am just being judgmental of a format that I haven't actually played. A bunch of cards have been spiking because of it. I don't see Wizards showing any interest in getting behind this format in any way, shape, or form, so I'm avoiding the spiked cards. Although, Dig Through Time, Foils, awesome. I mean, Vintage card, EDH card, definitely hold on to your Foils. But overall, do you think that there's a real future for Frontier? I know TCC and some other people have started to get behind it and are doing videos on it. I'll give it a shot, and I'll get back to you within the next 30 days over whether Frontier is a real format or not. Engineered Explosives. Oh my god, $60. $150 for foils. The Masterpiece version has doubled overnight. I can't even find a copy of it. I just wanted it as a singleton for my vintage deck. Ooh, I don't even know what to say about this crazy, crazy explosion that has happened here. I'm avoiding this card currently. It's super powerful. I play it in vintage. I play it in modern. I've got my play sets. I'm not liquidating my play sets, though, because there's absolutely no replacement for it. This needs a reprint. Avoid, though, the crazy price that it is currently at. For further reading, there's two great articles that I'm suggesting. Saffron Olive, one of my favorite MTG finance people because he does the math. His articles are all about the math. This guy is crazy. He's got a great EV for Ethervolt. Uh, and then MTG Stocks, I already mentioned the top 250 losers and gainers. His weekly column over there is what cards are you buying that are underpriced currently please leave them in the comments i want to talk for a second about patreon it helps me make this channel possible subscribing supports the channel a lot but particularly finance videos are really really difficult for me it's these awesome people that support the channel that allow me to spend hours of research putting together these finance videos and making them happen 
I am committed to 12 finance videos this year. And if I hit 25,000 subscribers, I will double that to 24 finance videos. If you really want to see more finance videos though, subscribe and become a patron of the channel. I greatly appreciate the people who are over there. I just went through a personal move and had to uh, rebuy some of my equipment. I'm about halfway to, to picking up um, some new equipment and being able to do some awesome stuff. So thank you everybody. Also, if you love chess, please check me out over at chess.com. I play a lot on chess.com. Until next time, choose your cards wisely. Ancient. Ancient? What am I talking about?